when we think of a matrix as being a function, say A, from Rn to Rn, in this case a square matrix, we might ask, in some sense, how big is the matrix in the sense of being a function? That might seem like a strange question. What do we mean by the size of a function? Well, you can talk about its integral um, in the case of a function from R to R, right? The integral is somehow a measurement of size or its amplitude. But what we mean for a matrix is something a little bit different. In both Rn and as the domain in Rn is the image, we can analyze how much vectors are stretched or shrunk overall. So for example, <clears throat> we can ask the question, um, given a vector v as input with some size, length of v, how big is the output av? In other words, if we have an input of a certain size and we examine its output, what's the relative size of those two things? This is a more general version of asking about eigenvalues in some sense. Recall an eigenvector is a non-zero vector v where a v is lambda v. So if v is an eigenvector, then the length of av divided by the length of v is of course lambda. Or maybe we should say absolute value of lambda. So that's the case if you have an eigendirection. But what if you just talk about any old vector that might be moved by the matrix? For example, perhaps in the input, this input becomes that output v is clearly not an eigenvector because it's changed direction. But I can still talk about how this output is twice as long as this input. So this is what we mean by the, by the magnitude, the size, the norm of a matrix. Here's what we do. The magnitude of a matrix A, and I'll call this the 2, 2 norm, for example, is, well, it's the max over all v of the size of av as a vector, the magnitude of av as a vector, over the magnitude of v as a vector. And to make this not, uh, not absurd, let's say non-zero vectors. The reason I call this the 2, 2 norm is I want to use the same notion of length for both the input and the output. So of course, by the 2 norm of v, I mean the square root of v, say, over the real numbers dot v, or over the complex numbers v star v. And uh, a v is measured the same way. Now you might object that this really shouldn't be a max. This should in fact be some sort of supremum. And that's certainly valid because this is an infinite set. But we know that if we can, if we can get the same value um, from a compact set, then the maximum actually exists. So maybe this is a supremum, properly speaking. But here we'll make a quick argument that um, it doesn't matter if you use a supremum or a maximum. Here's why that happens. I could consider, for example, the circle, which is the set of all vectors whose length is 1. So the circle is, of course, a compact set. And length is a continuous function on that compact set. Uh, and a is a continuous function. So that means that v going to the length of a v is continuous on the compact set v such that the length of v is 1. 
which means that this quantity is, of course, um, it obtains its maximum value in the compact set. So this number, the max, over v such that the length of v is 1, of these function values exists and is obtained, right? So when we look at the magnitude of the matrix A as the norm of A V over the norm of V, well, if V isn't on the circle, but it's a non-zero vector, we can divide off by its length. And then we get a vector on the circle, right? Of course, any vector is a scale, any non-zero vector is a really scaling of a vector on the circle. And then our, our magnitude of the matrix A is the norm of AV over the norm of V, the denominator is 1, and so this is the same quantity we had before. By the way, I called this a circle, of course, this is in Rn, this is the, uh, this is the sphere. The n minus 1 sphere in, say, Rn. And if you're working over the complex numbers, you have some notion of, of this sphere. It's a little harder to visualize, but this norm is still certainly well defined using the Hermitian inner product. So this is our definition of the magnitude of a matrix as an operator. So to wrap up this picture then, this means that if you have, say, a matrix A, let's say from R2 to R2 so that I can draw a picture. we can consider the input of vectors on the circle. And each vector in the circle ends up somewhere. The circle is somehow distorted. And when we ask for the norm of A, we're really asking, what is the maximum stretch in length? Of any um, of any input of length one. So one thing I want to point out is that the discussion so far has relied on using the two norm. Shortly, we'll consider other norms. The two norms are our most familiar one, right? The, uh, it's the Euclidean norm that, get, that comes from the dot product. But there are other norms that are also useful in many contexts and sometimes make computation simpler.